is God's roadmap for Israel and the church? These short Q&As will help guide you on your way. Where is justice for Gaza? It's called the world's largest open air prison. The propaganda machine has used a lot of energy in seeking to blame Israel for the living conditions in the Gaza Strip, formerly home of the Philistines in the time of King David, and now home to the Palestinians in the time of Hamas, the terrorist organization funded by Iran and by the United Nations. Firstly, though, to deal with the living conditions in Gaza. Ten years ago, there were reported 600 millionaires in Gaza. Recently, it was reported by Arab sources that this number has more than doubled. I've seen several videos of opulent hotels and shopping malls in Gaza, as well as fabulous mansions. Many of these millionaires gain their wealth from managing the 400 smuggling tunnels that come into Gaza from Egypt. There are many poor Gazans, including some who have been maintained in refugee status since the 1948 War of Independence. And there have been buildings destroyed in several conflicts by the Israeli response to Hamas rockets, as well as by Hamas rockets falling short. My point is that the situation is not fully shown by the world's media. But more important is to understand why there is a blockade around Gaza and why there are no Jewish civilians or soldiers inside Gaza. Gaza is often referred to as occupied by Israel, but it is absolutely not since 2005. Until 2005, there were 10,000 Jews living in Gaza, largely supporting themselves and many Arab employees through agriculture. There were also hundreds of Israeli soldiers there keeping the peace. There was considerable Arab pressure from around the world for Israel to withdraw from the 20% of Gaza that it still occupied. 80% had been evacuated in 1994 as part of the Oslo peace process. And so in 2005, Prime Minister Ariel Sharon made the decision to disengage completely from Gaza, and the Jewish residents were forcibly removed by Israeli soldiers. As Sharon explained to a group of evangelical prayer leaders led by Billy Brim, he wanted to make a clear gesture to the world that Israel was willing to make tough sacrifices to achieve peace with the Palestinians. It was land for peace. And it was hoped by Israel that Gaza would become the Singapore of the Mediterranean. Shortly after the Israeli withdrawal, in June 2007, Hamas launched a violent coup against the Palestinian Authority in Gaza and began the firing of rockets into Israel, which goes on to this day. This provoked a defensive reaction from Israel to control the border and seek to prevent Hamas from arming itself. We are all very familiar with the constant attacks on southern Israel by rocket, incendiary devices, and border riots that have resulted from granting sovereignty to the Palestinians in Gaza. The charters of both Hamas and the Palestinian Authority call for the destruction of the Jewish state, and that goal supersedes the health and prosperity of their own people. The lessons of disengagement from Gaza are there for all who have eyes to see. Only Israeli Jewish sovereignty in the lands that were granted to the Jews by the San Remo and League of Nations process almost exactly 100 years ago will provide peace and prosperity for both Jewish and Arab residents of those lands.